shall reflect on the life of Saint Edward the Confessor. Young Edward, the son of King Ethelred II and Queen Emma, and his half-brother Alfred, lived in exile with their uncle, the Duke of Normandy, during the reign of the Dane Canute. Alfred was murdered by the latter's illegitimate son, Harold, when he returned to England in 1036. But when King Hardin Canute died seven years later, Edward was acclaimed the rightful king. A saintly, conscientious man of forty, much given to prayer and works of mercy, his early misfortunes taught him to deprecate all earthly ambitions and he now concentrated fully on governing his people with Christian gentleness, justice and prudence. Long abandoned monasteries were restored and in the interest of better education it was decreed that schoolmasters like clerics were to be regarded as inviolable. Except for the occasion when Edward gave aid to Malcolm II of Scotland against Unserper Macbeth and another when he repelled a Welsh invasion, his 23-year reign was one of peace and prosperity. Edward had the Mercian, the West Saxon and the Danish laws which applied to their respective parts of his kingdom, codified and combined into one single system and this became universal to the realm, forming the basis of English common law. It is interesting to note that the system of trial by jury originated and was developed under the Anglo-Saxon kings. Their country courts were jointly presided over by the bishop and the sheriff, who exercised ecclesiastical and civil jurisdiction together. King Edward also abolished the odious Dengelget tax, which oppressed his people for 38 years. He was able to maintain his reign out of his own patrimony without the imposition of any taxes on his subjects. Little wonder then that he was the idol of the common people and was long remembered with affection as good King Edward. Edward was the first English king to touch and heal scrofulous sores. With his ring, a power which had been conferred originally on the kings of France by Saint Remy. Edward's famous deathbed vision of his country's future has seen remarkable fulfillment. Saint Edward died on the 5th of January 1066 and was buried in Saint Peter's Church, now Westminster Abbey which he had magnificently restored. He was canonized by Pope Alexander III in 1161.